Hi there, this is Unmesh from Fix and Perfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day and making it an incredible one. Today I'm going to share with you how to apply any pattern to any fabric in Photoshop, whether it's clothes, drapes, anything. Keeping into consideration the perspective, the peaks and the valleys and the folds, we'll do everything we can to make it look as realistic as possible. And also at the end, we'll learn how to instantly change it so that you don't have to do the entire process again for another pattern. I hope you enjoy this. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo or the pattern to follow along, check the links in the description. The first thing we need to do is to create and expand the pattern. So here I have a photo of the pattern. So let's create a pattern out of this. Keep in mind, this is a seamless pattern. So if I go to view and then pattern preview, which previews it, in other words, which repeats the pattern to show it to you. As you can see, this is a seamless pattern. There might be lines here, but if you zoom in, they will go away. It just shows that way. If you don't have a seamless pattern, there are other videos that you can follow along to create one. For now, let's follow along with this. By the way, you can download this using the link in the description. You can turn off the pattern preview by going to view again and just click on pattern preview again. Turn off the check, it's off. Now let's go to edit, define pattern. But where is define pattern? There it is. Sometimes it gets hard to find different menus and we're gonna name it pattern picks. Hit OK. Now let's get back to our image. Now we need to expand the pattern for it. Let's create a rectangle using the rectangle tool right here. Right now the fill is set to a different pattern. By default, it should be set to a color for you. Something like this would be the default. All you need to do is to create a rectangle like this of the size of the throw or whatever fabric there is in the background. So we're going to make it slightly larger like this. All right. Now we need to fill this with the pattern that we just created. How do we do that? With the rectangle tool still selected, click on the top, click on fill, and in here choose this button right here. That activates the pattern. Here you can choose the pattern that we just created, which is this one. Now this is very huge. We need to change the size. In other words, we need to scale it. Here are the scaling settings. You can also change the angle if you wish to. So I'm gonna decrease it and maybe set it to something like 20%. This seems nice, hit enter, and there we have our pattern. Now keep in mind, it is still a rectangle with the pattern applied. So if we try to resize it, the pattern remains, right? So we need to convert this into a smart object so that we can shape it. So with this layer selected, right click on it and then choose convert to smart object. And you can name this layer whatever you wish. I'm just gonna keep it pattern. Now press control or command T. So finally, it is time for us to shape the pattern, fold it, place it according to the fabric. Now let's rotate it a little bit, maybe like so, hit enter or return. Now what I recommend is decreasing the opacity so that you can see through what is behind. So let's keep it at about 40%. Press Control or Command T again and just place it accordingly. Hit enter or return. But now we need to arrange it according to the flow of this. Now there are two levels of this. The first level is the basic setting where we arrange the pattern according to the flow of the fabric. In the second level, we go a little deeper, a little more into the details and take care of the little folds here and there. So for a basic setting, while you're in the transform by pressing Ctrl or Command T, you can right click on it and then choose Warp and adjust it according to the flow of the fabric, like so. See the flow is coming like this. So we need to take this point up like so and don't forget to take the middle areas as well up. There you go. Now it's sitting well. After you're done with this, you'll also notice that there's a bend here. So how do we introduce an additional bend? Simple. At the top, there are these split options. Click on one of these. This is the horizontal split. And we will introduce a split right about here. There you go. And now we can use these additional controls to add that bend. So that's basically done and already it is looking fantastic. Now we already got into level two when we introduced that extra split, but let's take it further. Let's introduce a vertical split. Click on it. And for these folds, as you can see right here, we need to introduce one on the left of it, like so, and one on the right of it. Let's activate it one more time and let's apply it right here. Now the way you apply it is actually pretty simple. You just push from one side, like so, 
and pushed from the other side in a different direction, thus creating that fold as you can see. Similarly, let's do it right here as well. Push from one side like this, be a little gentle about it and push from the other side like that, thus creating that fold in the middle. Now after you have done one part of it, you can also do other parts of it by introducing some additional splits. Let's create here one more time. And here is another fold. So I'm going to introduce one here. And do we need to add one here? Let's not do that for now. Let's see if this is enough. Similarly, we can try experimenting with other areas as well. See how we are folding things? Let's do it right here as well. So I'm going to push it from here and push in from there. There you go, we are introducing that fold, that's enough. And actually, you can introduce as many as you like. So I introduced another split. This works for now. Hit enter or return. Already it is blending so well. I know it is not perfect and actually it doesn't need to be. This way it will look more realistic towards the end. Now if you want a little more fold, a little more finesse, you can always go to filter and then liquify. Inside of liquify on the right hand side, scroll down, we want to be able to see the background. So you want to make sure show backdrop is checked and we want to use the background layer because that's what we want to see. Now decrease the opacity to about 52% and we want the background to be behind. So make sure that is selected. And now you can move things around with the forward warp tool. So with the forward warp tool selected, you can scroll up, pressure is fine, keep it low and then you can move things from here as well, like so. You can increase or decrease the pressure to your liking. Move things around, add a little bit here and there, add a little more natural fold, irregularities, up to you. If you are creating something where other patterns will be applied, first apply a very basic check pattern so that when you change a pattern, all of the folds will be properly seen. I haven't done much here, let's zoom out. And once you're happy with it, just hit OK. Now some of you might be asking, Unmesh, why are you not using displacement maps? Fair question and the simple answer is it's not very accurate. If I go to filter, distort and displace and let's say we go higher, let's go 20 just to see which areas is it displacing. Hit OK and I have already created a sample displacement for you and you don't have to do this. I just wanted to show you that it doesn't work as well. As you can see these areas are being changed. So here's before displacement map and here it is after it which is very inaccurate. Have a look. There are changes here. There are changes, weird changes here and there. And that is why I just don't recommend applying it. So let's delete this. Next, we need to blend the pattern with that of the surface. For it, let's increase the opacity back up again to 100. And then instead of placing a mask here, we'll do it in a group because that allows us to create additional layers with the same mask. So with this pattern layer selected, press Ctrl or Command G so that one layer is inside the group. We're going to put other layers soon. Let's close the group, turn it off for now. With this background layer selected, let's make a selection of this. You can use the quick selection tool, you can use the object selection tool, you can even use the pen tool and take your time with it. I'm just doing a super quick selection. Now keep in mind we can improve this later. To subtract this additional area, hold the Alt key or the Option key and let's subtract this like so. Alright, this is fine for now. Let's subtract this part as well. Maybe add this one. With this group selected and the selection active, let's turn this on and click on the mask button. Now we have it limited just to that area. Let's open up the group. Here we have the pattern. Let's change the blend mode of the pattern from normal to multiply because multiply darkens and whatever pattern we apply to this, it's going to only darken it. Now let's turn it back on. Now definitely this is not looking right. We need to brighten some areas and darken some areas. So first let's select the bright areas. For it, hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on this eye right here just to have this visible. Hide everything else. Now let's go to Channels. Hold the Ctrl or Command and click here on the thumbnail of the RGB channel. It will make a selection based on the brightness levels. The brighter areas would be selected more and the darker areas would be selected less. Now let's turn it back on and then just above the pattern inside the group we are going to create a curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. 
There you go. It came with that mask. Now let's double click on the symbol of the adjustment layer to open up the properties and in here, let's increase it. Now we only wanted it in the absolute bright areas, not in all of the bright areas. So how do we control the mask? By the way, let's get back to the properties and adjust it first. Select the mask. Now for this one time, I'm going to use levels. You can also use curves, by the way. Let's press Control or Command L. And now let's control it. There you go. As you can see, the darks will become darker as we move this slider. See, now it's only affecting the brighter areas, just the brighter areas. And we're going to play with this. There you go. That seems about right. Hit OK. Have a look at this. Here's the before, here's the after. Now it's beginning to look better and better. If you want it to be more brighter, make a copy of this curves by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And for this one, I'm just gonna remove this middle point by taking it all the way up like Fat Joe and take the rightmost slider to the left, all the way to the left. Now this is way too much. So we're gonna go here, Ctrl or Command L again, and try to play and see if we can, you know, make it less. Hit OK, and then of course, decrease the opacity to something like 50. Let's keep it 50. It's a nice number to be at. What about these areas? I feel that these areas need to be a little more bright. So why not let's make another copy of this? Press Ctrl or Command J again. And this time I'm going to increase it all the way to 100. But we are only going to keep it in this particular area. So with this mask selected, Take the brush with black as the foreground color. Just erase the excess. This is nice. This is nice, isn't it? There you go. Beginning to look better and better. Now, since we have brightened stuff, we need to darken stuff too to balance things out. So now we need to go into the depths of the dark areas. Not in the mind, but in Photoshop. So inside of channels, again, we need to select the dark areas. But for that, just keep this one on. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the eye to keep this solo and get back to channels. Hold the controller command, click on the thumbnail of the RGB channel. Now we need the opposite selection of this since it's selecting brighter areas more. So how do we invert the selection? Press control shift I, command shift I to invert the selection. Now just above all of the drama that we have done here, keep in mind it should be inside the group. First of all, turn everything back on. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on this I again to turn everything back on. Select the topmost layer inside of this group. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. And this time we are going to take it down like so. See, it's adding that extra dimension. I love it. If you want to control the mask, select the mask, press Ctrl or Command L. Or if you do want to use curves, just for curves, Ctrl or Command M. Same thing, you can move these sliders. So if you take the left slider to the right, it's going to be concentrated in the extreme dark areas. Actually, this is fine. Hit OK. This looks good already. I don't think we need to do much here. Now this looks fantastic, but there is an issue. This is way too sharp. None of the prints are way too sharp on the fabric. Even the fabric is softer than this. So we need to soften the design as well. For it, let's get back to the pattern, select that layer, and then go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, like so. And two pixel blur is fine. Already it starts to look so good and realistic. Have a look at this. This is something. This is incredibly good. Now at this point, all you need to worry about is a good mask. And that you can easily control from this mask right here. Just name this group Pattern Application. And we're actually done with the drama inside. Let's close it and select this mask right here and you can control it. As you can see, the mask is not proper. Take the brush with black or white as the foreground color. Just clean up the mask like so. Now you can take your time to do this. I'm not going to do this for you. Please take your time to do this. There you go, like this. If there are any areas that are missing, for example, if you miss out certain areas, you can paint that area in white. If there are excess areas, you can remove that like this. See? It's not that hard. Also, I leave it up to you if these strands at the end are becoming too much. You can keep them. You can zoom in, do one strand at a time like so. Or if you want to remove that altogether, you can paint that with black like this. That's also a design choice and I leave that to you. If you want, you can also have a red border here around the corners where the threads are. 
absolutely up to you. Now, what if you have to do this with a hundred patterns or several many designs? You don't have to do this entire thing all over again. How do we change the pattern instantly? Simply open up this group. Remember, we created a smart object and one of the advantage of the smart object is you can change stuff later. Double click on the thumbnail of the pattern layer. Here we already have this rectangle. We can select the rectangle too. Right now it is filled with this pattern. We can change it to any pattern we like. For example, I already had this pattern. Once you change the pattern, press Ctrl or Command S to save it. And now when you get back to your document, have a look. It is changed. How cool is that? So that's how you can instantly change patterns without having to do everything again. But for you to be able to work with all of this accurately, I recommend starting with this pattern. That way, all of the folds and the stretching will be more accurate. So when you change it to something else, it will be a little more accurate. So that's how to apply a pattern to any surface in Photoshop. The first thing we need to do is to create the pattern, save it in Photoshop. Next, we need to apply the pattern to a rectangle then convert that layer into a smart object. Then using warp and transform and liquify, we need to shape it according to the folds of the fabric. And after that, we mask it out. And in the last steps, using blend modes and adjustment layers, we blend the subject with that of the surface. Also, do not forget to apply Gaussian blur to make the pattern more realistic, like so. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.